I recently did a video on the fairly new Radioddity GD88. And throughout that video, I kept referring to the Anytone 878. So, which one do you buy? The Radioddity GD88 or the trusted and time tested Anytone 878? Welcome to the house, Am. I'm Bob, WV7W. In this video, I'm going to give you what you need to make an informed decision for yourself. We'll give a fair and balanced comparison between these dual band DMR and analog radios. And stick around and find out which one I prefer now that I've had the chance to use both of these. Now for a full review of the Radioddity GD88, click on the card above. And I've also put a link in the description below I had a couple people mention that the GD88 isn't really new. It's actually a rebranded Kydera 880, which has been in the European market for a couple of years. It is, however, new to the US market, and Radioddity adds their own version of the firmware based on that of the Kydera. Now, in this video, I'm going to cover the following areas specifications, features, programming, both from the front panel as well as using the CPS software. And finally, I'm going to get into what I consider to be the most important, and that is user experience or how enjoyable the radio is to use. Now, to start things off, let's look at some of the specs of these guys. The 878 is a bit smaller than the GD88, but I really think it feels better in my hand. At 11.6 ounces, the 878 is also about 4 ounces lighter than the GD88, which weighs 12 ounces. The GD88 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, as where the 878 has a 3100 milliamp hour battery. And from my research, the 878 lasts considerably longer. And I don't think that's only from those extra 100 milliamps. I think some of that extra draw on the GD88 is due to that extra receiver that is always on. Next is transmit power. Now, both of these radios have a max power out of 7 watts, which is pretty solid for an HT. But what about when you don't need all of that power? The 878 has three other power levels of 5 watts, 2.5 watts, and 1 watt. The GD88 only has one lower power setting of 2.5 watts. This means when you're at home using a hotspot, you're sending out more signal than necessary and sucking more juice from an already lacking battery. Next is channels, talk groups, and contacts. Now the GD88 can hold up to 4,000 channels, 20,000 talk groups, and 300,000 contacts. Now this is more than enough to hold the entire contact database, which at the time of this video is about 226,000. The 878 can also hold 4,000 channels. If anyone can come anywhere close to that, leave a comment below. I think I'll be hard pressed to come up with even 100. Now, it can hold 10,000 top groups, which is half of that of the GD88, but there are currently only about 1,500 top groups on Brandmeister and about 6,000 on DMR Mark. So even if you wanted to load up all of those, plus some others from some other networks, I don't think you would come anywhere close to 10,000. Now, the 878 can hold 500,000 contacts, so it's pretty future-proof, here by a factor of almost two. Now, if I had to choose between more contacts and more talk groups, I would certainly choose more contacts. Now on to the features. The 878 and the GD88 can both receive between 136 and 174 megahertz on VHF and between 400 and 480 megahertz on UHF. Out of the box, the GD88 can transmit on all of those, 136 to 134 and 400 and 480. Now, by default, the 878 can only transmit on the ham bands for the country it is programmed for. Now, it can be changed through software to open up the commercial segments. Some may view that as a downside, but I see it as a positive. Unless you have a real reason to transmit outside the ham bands, 
This lockdown protects you from yourself. If you accidentally hit that P to T button on a frequency that is outside the amateur bands. Now, if you really want to, you can change it, but you do it at your own peril. Now, one thing the GD88 has that the 878 doesn't is dual receivers. The GD88 can actually receive two transmissions at the same time. It can even receive while you're transmitting. The 878 has dual watch, and it will receive on either of the VFOs, but not at the same time. Now, this may sound like a huge win for the GD88, but there's one problem as I see it, and that is you cannot turn off that secondary receiver. Sure, you can turn the volume down, but you can't disable it. With the 878, you can easily switch between either VFO and even turn off the secondary so it doesn't interfere with your primary. Now, I typically only use single, and I leave the other su the subband off. Now, since the GD88 has two separate receivers, it can do what is known as cross-band repeater. This means that it can receive on, say, 440 band and retransmit out on two meters. I've had other radios that can do this, and to be perfectly honest, I've never found a reason to use it. Now, according to the Radiati website, this radio also does what is known as same frequency repeat using the two DMR time slots. And I'm not sure how that works, and I think it has even less practical utility. The 878 doesn't do either of these since it only has one receiver. I'm going to talk about the screens for a moment. Out of the box, the GD88's display looks a bit more appealing, but you can't really change anything about it. And since you can't get rid of that other band, it really limits what can, you can see on the display. The 878, however, is completely customizable, including what colors the various elements are, and you can even change the background image. You can even have a custom boot screen, like what I have here. The big thing is you get much more information when a digital call comes in. You can see a lot more about the contact. Now let's talk about APRS, or Automated Packet Reporting System. Many radios today support APRS transmit or beaconing, but few actually support APRS receive. The 878 fully supports both analog and digital transmit and receive. Now, the Radiati website claims that the GD8 supports APRS receive, and it does receive digital APR just fine. But what I've tried and what I've read online, the analog receive doesn't currently seem to be working. This may be fixed in the future, but if it turns out that it only truly supports digital APRS receive, I'm going to throw the deception flag on their website. Next, I'll briefly discuss Bluetooth. The 878 UV and UV2 Plus models both support Bluetooth audio, as well as this little push-to-talk button that comes with it. So you could pair the radio to your car and then use this push to talk button strapped to your steering wheel to transmit. Now, I haven't tried that yet, but it seems pretty cool. Now, the GD888 has no support for Bluetooth. Now, let's talk about programming. Both of these radios have some degree of programming capability from the front panel. But one of them can do much more than the other. Care to take a guess which one? If you guess the 878, you'd be right. You can create contacts, channels, and zones on the 878. On the GD88, it will only allow you to create contacts, but zones can only be selected and channels can only be selected and edited, but not created. Now, with that being said, it is fine to create a channel or two from the front panel, but to be honest, if you're going to add a lot of them, you will want to use the CPS software. The 878 seems to allow you to change pretty much all of the radio settings from the front panel as well as from the software. The GD88, on the other hand, is pretty limited on what you can change. Now comes the CPS, or computer programming software. Now, neither of these are what I would call user-friendly. The 878 is a little less buggy. Let's face it, DMR radios are not simple and you have to expect a certain learning curve. Both CPS versions run only on Windows. So if you're a Mac user like me, 
you will need a Windows device to program these guys. Now, I couldn't get the GD88 software to work on my Windows virtual machine running in parallels. The 878 CPS works just fine on the VM. So if you only have a Mac, you might have to avoid the GD88, unless you have access to a Windows machine. To be perfectly honest, if you're going to be around the ham radio hobby, unfortunately, you need at least one Windows-based machine. Now, I got a cheap Windows 10 tablet PC, which only cost me about $150. Now, the differences so far have been somewhat esoteric and a bit personal preference. Now we're going to get into the area that I think shows a clear winner, and that is user experience. User experience is a big topic in software development, but it also applies here. It all boils down to how enjoyable is the radio to use? How simple is the interface? How does it feel in your hand? How does it sound? How well does it work? Is it consistent and stable, or does it have quirks and bugs? In my video on the GD88, I went over several quirks that it exhibits. The bottom line is the GD88 seems like a beta version and not quite ready for prime time, as where the 878 is a solid and reliable performer. It should come as no surprise to you which one I recommend. Even though it costs about $100 more, in my book, the winner is the Anytone 878UV2+. It is an outstanding radio and is very nice to use. The old adage of you get what you pay for applies here. Now, although the Radioddity GD88 has promise, I cannot recommend it this time. Maybe once they make some updates to the firmware, it may be a solid performer. But for now, it is just frustrating. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button as it tells YouTube to show it to more hams. And if you want to know when my next video comes out, consider subscribing and hit that bell button to get notified. Until next time, 73s.